So we will now have estimation of two parameters. If we want to estimate two population means, we select two independent samples from these populations and compute the difference between the two sample means. Thus, the best point estimate of the two population, the difference between the two population means mu sub 2 and mu sub 1 is the, diff is the statistic which is the difference between the two sample means x sub 2, x sub 1. So, in this case, we must consider sampling distributions of x sub 2 and x sub 1. The, f uh, the first case is uh, variances are known. So, we want to find the confidence interval for the difference between the two population means. So, we are given to uh, two sample means x sub 1, x sub 2 with independent random sample sizes of n1, n2, okay, with known population variances, sigma one, sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared respectively. So, an estimate of the difference between these two population means with level of significance alpha is given by the following formula. Okay, so, you have the difference between the two sample means. So, say sub alpha over 2 is the left tail z value from the standard normal distribution table. Now, for uh, unknown variances, okay, sigma 1 and sigma 2, but uh, in this case, we assume that the population variances are equal. Then, an estimate for the difference between the uh, population means mu sub 2 and mu sub 1 will be by this formula. Okay. So, this time we will be using the the t value that is from the t from the uh, t distribution table with number of degrees of freedom of n1 plus n2 minus 2 and then alpha over 2 from the given uh, degree of confidence. So, SP here in the formula is the pooled standard deviation. This is obtained by this formula. So, 1 minus or oh, n 1 minus 1 and then the sample standard deviation S 1. This is n 2 minus 1 and then n 1 plus n 2 minus 2. For unknown variances and not equal, Okay, this is the formula for the difference between the two population means. Uh, this is similar to the uh, first case, only that uh, we replace A by T sub alpha over 2 and then sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared will be replaced by S sub 1 squared, S sub 2 squared. But for the t value, we will be using the a value of alpha over 2 from the degree of, given degree of confidence. And then, this is how you will compute okay, for the number of degrees of freedom. Okay, we round it up to whole number, the value of b. For the difference of two proportions, okay, that will be the the difference between okay the difference between the uh, the sample proportions these are the two proportion of successes and then from the degree of confidence q1 and q2 here are the complement of p1 the proportion of failures okay so let's have Example number one, a study was conducted to determine if a certain treatment has any effect on the amount of metal removed in a pickling operation. So, a random sample of 100 pieces was immersed in a bath for 24 hours without the treatment. 
yielding an average of 12.2 milliliters or millimeters of metal removed and sample standard deviation of 1.1 millimeters. A second sample of 200 pieces was exposed to the treatment followed by the 24-hour immersion in the bath resulting in an average of 9.1 millimeters of metal with a sample standard deviation of 0.9. Compute a 98% confidence interval estimate for the difference between the population means So we are given for sample 1 Okay The sample means the standard deviation sample standard deviation and then the sample size Okay, and then you are also for sample 2 given the uh, sample mean x1, the standard deviation of 0.9, the sample size of 200. Although we have unknown population variances here, the sample sizes are too large no, for the table. So we can use s as an estimate of sigma and then apply case 1. Okay. But in the next slide, we will try to use case 2. No? The unknown uh, variances and uh, unknown equal variances. So, with a 98 degree confidence case, okay, so uh, your alpha over 2 will be 0.1 and then from the Z table you expect to get negative 2.325. Okay, take the absolute value for the confidence interval formula here. Okay, so sigma 1 is now 1.1, sigma 2 is 0 0.9, n1, n2 or 100 and 200 respectively. So, this is your z sub alpha over 2, your x2 minus 9, uh, x1. We always take x2 to be greater than 1, no? so we will avoid a negative difference. Okay, so we are... 98% confident that the two pop the difference between the two population means okay will fall between 2.8 and 3.4 so if we will use case 2 assume equal variances okay so the number of degrees of freedom will be 298 in the t table that is considered as infinite so, if you have a 98% uh, degree confidence, your alpha over 2 will be 0 0.01. And then, from the, uh, sorry, from the T table, okay, so that will be considered as infinite. And then, uh, using point zero, under 0 0.01 column, you should get 2.326. No? And then, uh, your pooled standard deviation will be okay, so this is uh, 99, 100 minus 1, and then uh, 1.1 squared plus 200 minus 1 or 199 times 0.9 squared divided by 298. So you should be getting 0.97. So 12.2 minus 9.1. Okay, and then this is 2.326 from the table, your SP is 0.97, so square root of 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200. So the, the difference between the two population means will fall between 2.82 to 3.38. From the previous slide, we, we obtained 2.8 to 3.4, no? so very close. An experiment reported in Popular Science compared fuel economies for two types of similarly equipped diesel mini trucks. Let us suppose that we have 12 for the first type of truck and then for the second type of truck we have 10. Okay, and then the mean average for the first sample, we have 16 kilometers per liter with a standard deviation of 1 kilometer per liter. 
the second sample we have 11 the average is 11 kilometers per liter with a standard deviation of 0.8 so construct a 90 percent confidence interval for the difference between the average kilometer per liter for the two mini trucks so we are given from the two samples okay Sample means the standard sample standard deviation and the sample sizes, and then given the a ninety percent degree confidence. Okay, your alpha over two will be point zero five. Okay, and then this since we have unknown. Okay. Variances and then it is stated that the population variances are not equal so we make use of case 3 so in case 3 we have to compute for the number of degrees of freedom using this formula okay so you're given s1 s2 n1 n2 and then expect you get 19.98 or 20 and then from the z table okay under 0 0.05 and 20 number of degrees of freedom the value is 1.725 okay so using the formula for case 3 uh, x2 is 16 x1 is 11 so this is your t sub alpha over 2 and then your s1 your s2 n1 n2 okay so we are 90 percent confident that the difference between the two population means okay will fall between 4.34 and 5.66 a certain geneticist is interested in the proportion of males and females in the population that have a certain minor blood disorder in a random sample of 1000 males 2050 250 are found to be afflicted whereas 275 of 1000 females tested appear to have the disorder so compute a 95 percent confidence interval for the difference between the proportion of males and females that have blood disorder so we are given uh, sample the first sample 1000 and then the proportion of success is 250 so p1 is 0.25 uh, by the way the the sample size is 320 so this is the the proportion of uh, from 1,000, the proportion of success in sample 2 is uh, 320, not 275. Okay. So, then we change this to uh, 320. So, you have 0.32. And then you have the proportion of failures, which is the complement. Okay, so with a 95% degree confidence, you have here 0 0.025 and then from the Z table that corresponds to 1.96. And then using the formula no, for, the, for estimating the difference between two proportions. So we have 0.25 here. Okay, and then ah, we'll take this as your P2, so 0 0.32, 0 0.25. And then your 1.96 okay so this is your p1 q1 p2 q2 and then n1 n2 same sizes so the proportion of the difference between the two population proportions will be with a uh, 95 percent degree confidence will fall between 0 0.0306 and 0 0.1094.